okay like grab your popcorn whatever you want to do like a story time because this was one of the biggest learning lessons yet so basically bought this property subject to the existing mortgage um in florida it was a completely renovated home and when i bought this property the intention was that i would rewrap the 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 note and resell it to someone else meaning i would basically become the bank to another um homeowner who's looking for a primary residence right good got into the deal and we raised enough money um to cover three months three months of holding costs now in doing that one the first thing is that we found um we found someone who was interested they looked on a property then they went ghost okay then we found another person who was interested went ghost we're approaching month three slowly and we're like you know what we're at month three backup exit strategy we're gonna do a lease option because by this point it's three months it's vacant let's try to do a lease option while still trying to become the bank for someone else now a lease option for those who don't know that's when you you can basically rent a property for a certain time and then after that time frame you decide to buy the house you basically buy the house so for example you would rent the house for 12 months and then after 12 months you're committing to purchasing that house basically anyways did the lease option um found this person who was ready to go this person drove down from atlanta looked on the house they're like listen i want in um what can i put a deposit down just to secure the spot which i should have taken that deposit i should have taken that deposit you know to hold the spot anyways i should have taken that um and then she looked on it she was ready to go she applied run her credit background check everything lady went ghost right which is why i'm like you know what i should have taken that deposit but during this entire time i felt bad because the capital partner slash the private money lender who came in into this deal the intention was for that hey they would get their money back in like three three to six months right that was the plan so i think now we're like month five month five or month six and i was telling him hey this is what's going on with the property all that stuff and my god this person is so amazing they're like listen i understand um we did not expect it to go the market to shift the way how it did um so i appreciate his um understanding and feedback he was even coming up with ideas helping us to helping me to figure out what can we do to get this property occupied so this is why it's also good with to know the type of persons you are getting into business with because the fact that this person has like real estate knowledge that helped a lot um but eventually we did get the property um we found someone for the property i think this is by month seven or month eight so imagine seven eight months property sitting vacant and you still have to pay for the upkeep out of pocket you still have to make sure the mortgage is paid each month you still have to make sure the lawn care is done if there's any repairs not needless to say plus i don't know how i forget this um there was an issue with the pool right and this makes me like i'm not gonna buy a house with a pool again that's i'm gonna rent out there was an issue with a pool that cost us over two thousand dollars so the first thing oh might i tell you i was also scammed a thousand bucks yes i was scammed a thousand bucks and this was from a reputable company that had a franchise and everything like that they had a franchise but the franchise owner was basically making service calls committing saying that these service calls were done um collecting payment and still was not doing the work so i actually call like the main franchise owner or whatever and they're like oh i'm sorry the franchise owner basically was committing fraud and a bunch of different stuff luckily i use had to use my credit card to pay for that service so i could get my money back from american express but that was some of another thing that i encountered going through that project but we when we did find the person who came in um this person was all the way from jacksonville um they came in they want they had all intention to i think it was rent the property out or to do a lease option actually i think it was to do a lease option and then to walk the property and after they're like you know what how about we do the owner financing from the get-go 
So they did that. Um, and I learned a lot in this too. Like a lot of times you put deals on paper and it's not going to work out in paper on paper. Um, in initially we wanted to get at least $30,000 as a down payment because the private one lender came in with a lot of money. So we we're going to use that down payment from the new buyer to pay off that private one lender. It did not go like that. So we got way less as a down payment. And I think at this point as well, the buyers were really serious. Um, they completed the application. Um, they, we run background check, credit check, everything. They were ready to go. And what had happened was they did not have a lot of money saved up. Um, they, their rent to income ratio was fantastic. Um, their, their references were really good as well. But what, one of the lessons it taught me as well, like you, a lot of times you just got to work with the buyer and, and get creative. Um, you can't be greedy all the time. It's like, we had to approach it off in terms of what can we do to help this buyer? Cause at the same time, you don't want to put the wrong person in the house because you're so desperate but you also don't want to push someone away because you're so greedy so what we did for this transaction was that we sell a finance the closing cost um, for the buyer we increase the payment each month um, drastically um, and they even suggested that they're like we'll pay a higher monthly payment as well um, and then we basically work with them for the down payment and then we increased the purchase price from what it was initially um so thank god after like eight months that property is now occupied thank you lord because god knows i couldn't handle that much needless to say another thing that happened was after we set the terms with the new buyer we found out that the mortgage payment moved from like 1800 bucks to like 2300 bucks because of taxes so we couldn't even go back and renegotiate the the monthly payment so this is why it's always good to have that cushion if you're buying a property subject to the existing mortgage payment and you're gonna wrap it and resell it to someone else you want to make sure your monthly payment you have enough cushion because things like this happens taxes are gonna increase um insurance is gonna increase and we found this out because it's like the beginning of the year, ending of the year type of thing. Um, and we're like, you know what, we'll get creative with it. And we initially we had enough cushion to still, even though the taxes increase, that monthly payment that we uh, arranged with the buyer was sufficient to cover it and still leave money aside for reserves for us to build. So that this property was really a learning lesson and I'm grateful for the private money lender who's also the capital partner in this who was very understanding. And because it took so long for them to get their money back, we, I bumped up their, um, their equity portion by 10%. Um, and just to create a win-win situation for everyone because we're in this for the long haul. Um, but yeah, like that was a pain. I think that was the toughest property that I have to deal with. I mean, I've dealt with problems with different properties, but that one was so much learning lesson. Um, going through closing, I had issues with the title company. Um, so that was also a learning process as well, going through the entire thing with a wrap bar, because I've done it not in Florida, I've done it in a different state. And um, in doing a different state, it was a completely different process. So doing it here, in Florida, um, it was also like a learning process as well. And I think it was also a learning process for that title company for the first time doing a rap as creative as that one. Um, but grateful that it's done. I'm thinking like, what are the lessons that I learned with that one? But biggest takeaway from that is don't be too desperate that you put the wrong, um, the the wrong tenant or buyer in a house so still as much as you want to to rent out that property or sell that property make sure you vet that tenant or potential buyer properly um if you have a partner consult with your partner put two two i two heads is better than one that's it yeah put the two heads together and um as well as like make sure you have two exit strategies like i say this all the time 
and you know when to pivot because when we bought this house i knew that there's going to be two exit strategies and i knew by month three if it didn't sell i would switch the exit strategy so to get that property um rented we try the wrap we try to wrap it where we list it on facebook marketplace um we listed it on zillow then we switched to a rent rent by uh, rent to own which is slash lease option and all of that we kept changing the terms on facebook marketplace changing it on zillow then we listed it for rent so it got to a point where we had two listings one if they want to own or finance it and one if they want to rent it and another one if they also want to do rent to own so we were getting traction from three listing uh, we run sponsored ads with that so those are some of the marketing thing market marketing tools or tactics that we use to get traction on it um but definitely a learning lesson and it helps me to know that the next time i do a wrap how to fine tune my process what to do what not to do the different marketing things that i saw work that i would implement things that i will not even try again so that was my lesson um when it comes on to buying that property subject to and trying to resell it while using other people's money and still creating a win-win situation